Nathan, how's it going, brother? Hey, Matt, I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm doing perfect, man. Thank you so, so much for being here. We're super stoked to be able to talk with you and kind of other people as we as we walk through this whole series, man. But it's going to be really cool just to hear from someone who, like I mentioned before, is just serving faithfully week in and week out at their local church to kind of get a peek behind the curtain of, you know, what, what that looks like for you. Um, so if you don't mind, can you maybe just share a little bit about your experience, kind of where you're from, how long you've been serving and in what capacity? Yeah, you bet. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, Matt. I really appreciate it. Uh, so I've been serving on various worship teams uh, for the last 25 years um, and uh, as a volunteer. And it was just in the last 18 months that I uh, was hired on as a part time, uh, basically worship leader um, at my local church uh, in the, a, bur a burb, a suburb of uh, northern Milwaukee. Um, and so I think I can bring a little bit of an interesting perspective having the vast majority of my worship uh, experiences have been as a volunteer and then transitioning over mm -hmm. to, um, you know, being paid staff or whatever it brings a little bit of a unique uh, perspective of things. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I play acoustic guitar, guitar primarily. Um, I dabble in some keys, some simple, you know, worship keys here and there. Uh, and then I'm a vocalist uh, also, a little bit of rhythm, electric guitar, but uh, acoustic is my primary instrument. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. So maybe we'll start, we'll start there. Um, you know, just with regards to worship specifically, you know, what do you think makes uh, a great worship volunteer, maybe both for just your musicians and then maybe the person leading the band as well? What do you think are good qualities to be looking for there? Well, it's such, a, it's such an in-depth question, and, and I hate to just throw out right away the churchy answer, you know, but, yeah, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's about that heart for Jesus, man. That person mm -hmm. that is a sold-out follower of Jesus that is just so passionate that, you know, when yeah. someone in the crowd looks up on the stage and they can see the love of Jesus shining through that song, through their face, through that electric guitar riff, you know, I, I just mm -hmm. think I'll take that person any day who's passionate for Jesus. Now, now that said, in other podcasts, you know, that we've had on this channel, we've talked about bringing in people that maybe don't even know Jesus yet. And, and I don't want to discount that because I've personally seen that be very powerful to start that journey for people or to bring them along that journey. So I, I think it can work also for sure. But boy, that sold out follower of Jesus that just wants to give their all I think that's one of the things that makes a, a really fantastic volunteer and also someone who's curious, no matter what level you're mm -hmm. at, right? We have people come in and they, you're, maybe they're a young person, they just picked up their guitar. Or I play with some older guys that, you know, know every single scale and everything else, but I still want them to be curious about the songs that we're learning and curious about this Jesus that we're singing about. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Um, kind of take that a step further. So if you are just a, a volunteer, you know, you are not by any means on staff or getting paid to be there, uh, but you're given your time as a, as a musician on the worship team. What is something that you really appreciate from your worship leader to make your uh, role on that team just that more exciting and, and easy? Yeah, you bet. So uh, at the church that I'm at right now, we have a full-time worship director and an associate uh, part-time worship director and then me. Um, but those two, man, ah, Matt, they're just so amazing. And the thing that I love about them so much is how they are so people-centric. I mean, they are amazing musicians. Um, you know, one of them, especially the, the best musician that we have, you know, in total. Um, but, and they want to put out, you know, a product, if you want to call it that on Sunday morning, uh, what we're, when we're leading worship, that is excellent because Jesus gave his everything for us. We should give our everything for him. We've talked about right. it before, you know, on, on this podcast again, but, um, it's about the people. So before they're going to sacrifice someone's, you know, feelings or things of that nature, um, it's going to be about making, uh, the people feel appreciated and it's going to be very people centric. And that's one of the things I love about being a part of this church that I'm blessed to be a part of. Yeah, that's incredible. All right. So the other side of that coin would be, what are some things in your experience, you know, that you have maybe uh, found frustrating or maybe inhibited you in any way, you know, so that way worship leaders can just know a little bit better how they can, you know, equip their volunteers. Maybe they're not aware that they're doing something that might be stifling the other members of their team. Is there anything that comes to mind with that? 
Yeah, there is. And certainly this isn't kind of true of the two that I get to work with right now, but maybe some, some past experiences. Uh, I think it can kind of be summed up in remembering that most of your volunteers are not at the musicianship level that you're at, right? Mm -hmm. So something as simple as I got a guy who plays guitar, never uses a capo, right? And so he's mm -hmm. picking a song and he's putting it in some funky flat key that maybe not everybody knows. And you go into to practice that song and there's no capo key for that. And you got to send an email. Hey, could we get a capo key for that? So again, maybe not something that they would necessarily think about because they're at this amazing musicianship level, but, but we've got to remember that not everybody is at that level on our team. The other thing is to remember that we don't have, we as volunteers, we don't have unlimited time. So my, I'm a engineer um, by day, I uh, work a lot of hours and finding the time uh, to rehearse, especially with travel can be a little bit difficult. So if those chord charts and the forms of those songs and we, we are big prime users, so having that prime set list ready so I can practice ahead of time, if that's not happening till Thursday or Friday for a weekend service, I may not have the time that I need to practice. So getting that done ahead of time, establishing all of that, you know, at, at a minimum a week, if it's not a couple weeks again, because we just don't have unlimited time as volunteers. Um, and then I say the last thing I would think about there is just like those last minute changes. So you, you may not think they're a big deal, but you got that electric guitar player and he has put his heart and soul into learning that riff that you wanted him to learn yeah. for that specific song and that's the hook of the song and everybody's excited about that and and he learned it in this key and oh well i've decided it's going to be in this key or we've changed the singers and i understand that stuff happens at the last second you know, i've had people yeah. text me at four o'clock in the morning and say hey i'm sick i'm not going to be there and you're pivoting i'm not talking about that i'm talking about just not doing your upfront work to know this is the key we're going to land on and then changing it last minute that can be really really frustrating with with volunteers so maybe those seem like yeah. simple things but if you're a great musician uh, those things seem, you know, not monumental to you, but to a volunteer, they may be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's something we talk about all the time as the worship leader. The very least you can do is make sure that they have the resources that they need. You know, if they want to rehearse on their own time, that's up to them. And then you can have conversations with them, you know, if if need to be had. Um, but yeah, as, as long as you're getting them the resources. Um, yeah. then then they'll be very, very thankful. So that's, uh, that's great insight. Um, that's right. This is kind of one that just popped into my head, but uh, this is a question we also get here, Loop Community, is like when it comes to building community amongst your worship members, you know, how, how is, are there ways that you can go about that outside of just meeting on a Sunday night or a Wednesday night? And what role do you think like community plays when bringing worship team members together. Sorry, I'm kind of putting you on the spot with that one, but that just no kind of problem. popped in my head as you were talking. If you have any thoughts on that, it'd be great. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, I hate to keep referring to previous podcasts that you guys have had, but I'm a, I'm just, I'm a committed listener and I just soak it all mm -hmm. up every time. And one of the things that was talked about recently was this opportunity to party. And I just think that is so important. So, um, mm -hmm. I I'm blessed. Uh, I have 15 acres live on a farm and we open up our farm all the time. And at least multiple times a year, we're having the entire worship. Anybody who's in our, our worship and arts program, it's about a hundred volunteers overall. We're having them out. We're cooking them an amazing meal. We're bringing in an outside band to play some praise and worship so oh, wow. that they don't have to, you know what I mean? They get mm -hmm. to just too many yeah. times that they're just always on. Right. And so we yeah. give them opportunity to just worship and, and they're usually really good musicians. So they see really high level musicians and we party volleyball, hay rides, every, you know, it's bring your family kind of thing. It isn't just for just the volunteers and oh my goodness, yeah. the, the response we get to that is just off the charts. So I think mm. that, that partying is, is huge, huge. The other thing that we've adjusted our timing and, and we do Sunday only rehearsals, um, at the campus that I'm involved at. And so that means we got to start pretty early on a, on a Sunday morning, but we purposely yeah. do that to get through everything and then have a, what's turned into be a really sweet devotion time. What can I be praying about? You know, what, what can we be praying about as a team? And then remembering, Hey, you know, your kid was struggling with that 
test, how did that go? Or, you know, just remembering that being a community and really listening to people. Um, I send out an email um, right after I send out the email that says, hey, your forms are set, keys are set, all that stuff. I send out an email separate right after that saying, what can I be praying about for you this week? And just having that connection with them about about what's going on in their lives and truly praying about that. Um, I think that really, really builds connection. Yeah, that's that's terrific. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head, giving your team members an opportunity to engage in worship together outside of those gatherings where, you know, they're the ones leading, I think is is an awesome piece of advice. Any any way you can kind of curate, uh, you know, moments like that and, and facilitate those experiences. That's a uh, that's huge. Um, kind of goes into my maybe into my next question, um, which would be how can worship pastors help their volunteers buy in and be fully invested in what you're doing as a worship ministry. Maybe it kind of tags onto that last question a little bit, but uh, what do you think about that and increasing this level of buy-in and engagement and investment? I think we don't often talk enough about, let's call it God sightings. There's lots of different things that you can talk about you know, the weekend, but it's, but it's that where you saw God show up, where you saw that life change and, and Certainly in the arts ministries, we don't always get positive comments. We get those negative comments. Yeah. And, and I think I've, I've worked with worship pastors that do a pretty good job of kind of insulating us from those. But we shouldn't be insulated from the person that said, man, I've never heard that song before. It touched my heart. This is what's going on in my life. And that's exactly what I needed to hear. Wow, I couldn't believe how that song or those songs integrated in with what the pastor was talking about. It was like this one coherent package. Thank you so much for working hard on that. And maybe we don't hear those things enough, but when we do, we yeah. got to pass them on. We got to let our volunteers know that this time and this effort yeah. that they're putting into this, it is it is worth it. It is worth it. So passing on those God stories, I think, is, is one way to get by. And who doesn't yeah. want to be a part of something where people are saying, I'm changed because of your efforts. We all want that. It's, it's inherent to who we are. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's great. I mean, the worship team, they're the, the, first per, the first people you're interacting with and the last people you're often <laughs> interacting with as, as you leave. So yeah, it's definitely encouraging to, to hear those stories and definitely pass, pass those on. Um, yeah, that's incredible. Um, kind of the last question I have, uh, for you, it's just what word of advice maybe do you have for anyone who's brand new to serving either on the worship team or, or just in, in any capacity? You know, they're just now serving at their at their local church. You know, what, what bit of advice do you have for those people? Yeah, it kind of dovetails in a little bit. It's kind of a two part answer. The first one that dovetails in is that it's worth it. The effort that you're putting forth, that, that being at church at 645 a.m. On, on a Sunday morning to start rehearsal it's worth it. If it's that Thursday yeah. night when you've been at work all day and you don't feel like going, it's worth it. Yeah. The people mm -hmm. that you are reaching, the Jesus that we're proclaiming, it's worth it. And so, so never doubt that. Um, and then the, the other thing I would say is just be curious. Be curious about new music. Be curious about that new chord form. Be curious about that new gear that you hear somebody using. Um, and, and that that makes it exciting. That makes it not the mundane. Um, and then the last thing I'll say, I said two, but I'll say three things. And the last thing I'll say is that be a blessing to your to your worship person. Um, yeah, maybe not not all churches is it a paid position and you say, well, that's their job and whatever, but it's it's a tough job. It's a tough job. And there, you're that interface between the pastor and then, you know, what's going on with the planning team. And then, as you mentioned it before, Matt, you're like, that's the first person you see on a Sunday morning and the last person yeah. to see your, your services are, um, you know, be, um, just bless them and support them and encourage them. Part of their job is to encourage you, but we should be encouraging them also and making sure that they're okay and they're taking care of their mental health and, and just being, being ready to do whatever needs to be done. Right. I love to see servant leaders who uh, we had an issue at our church where uh, we flooded the whole sanctuary and they were sent out this urgent email like a water uh, a sprinkler. Oh, wow. bus. Right. We come in on Saturday, oh, Saturday morning, water everywhere. They send out this urgent email. Can we have volunteers come in, do this, do this, whatever. The first person I saw when I walked in was our senior pastor. 
He was there wow. on his hands and knees, servant leadership, yeah. willing to do what's, you know, the biggest thing or the smallest thing. I've been blessed that I started out, you know, doing sound. And then I was the lyrics yeah. person. And then I was a singer. And then I was a player. You know, I've kind of made that natural progression. And if they ask me to go back and be the lyrics person, I'm going to say yes. That's yeah. the, that's a way to bless your the people you work with beyond belief. You know, maybe it's maybe people would say, "Oh, you're just being a yes person," but there's some times where that's okay. <laughs> oh man, yeah. As I mean, man, we talk about it all the time here. The the lyrics and the people in the back, man, they do not get enough credit for doing what they do. Right. And I think it goes back to what you were saying about just like constantly giving them that feedback. You know, you as the worship leader might be. You know, hearing all this, uh, you know, all this positive encouragement, but it's just as important to relay that to those people, because if they know that, like, hey, the lyrics don't come up on the screen, more people than you think might not be singing along as confident as as confidently as they think they would, you know, and that's obviously a, a huge part of the service. So I think just being faithful in, uh, you know, in, in building those people up and just letting them know that their work you know because they know they yeah. do but sometimes just to hear that will just make them that much more excited and, and everything so that's definitely a, a two-way street but uh yeah that's that's a yeah, good word Nathan, man that's a good word yeah i uh i mean i can just i can just hear your passion man in your heart and it's mm. just awesome to to hear from you so I, i'm really excited to have more of these conversations we'll have to have you you know back on at some point down the line just to talk more about it but i i really appreciate you for for tuning in today. Nathan, thank you so, so much. You bet. Thanks for the opportunity. Be blessed. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.